You can support your local non-league club or buy a mystery box by checking out the nonleaguefootballshop.co.uk and upon checkout, make sure you use the promo code RDF Tactics 10 for a 10% discount. Hello and welcome back to the RDF YouTube channel. Today's tactic is inspired by a Liverpool legend, the great Bob Paisley. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about him a little, we're going to talk about his tactical style, then we're going to look at the football manager tactic and check the results. Also check out my community page where my subscribers can get some great perks such as get your name in the credits or even get early access to some videos but for now let's get started. The great Bob Paisley, to this day, is the most successful manager to have managed Liverpool Football Club. During his nine years at the club, from 1974 to 1983, he won the Football League First Division six times, the English League Cup three times, the Community Shield on six different occasions, the UEFA Cup, the UEFA Super Cup and most famously winning the European Cup three times within four years. That was in 1977, 78 and 81. He was averaging 2.2 trophies per season and it all started under Bill Shankly, another Liverpool legend. Bob Paisley was his first team coach and a well-respected staff member for his knowledge at Liverpool Football Club, having been there since 1939. But there was one match in particular, whilst Bill Shankly was in charge, that would change Liverpool Football Club forever. And we are now going to talk a little about that. After a 1973 European Cup tie against Red Star Belgrade, Liverpool's boot room became intrigued by Red Star's style of play. Bob Paisley had noticed how comfortable and effective their opponent's central defenders were on the ball. And this was at a time, especially in England, where central defenders were seen as hard men and not technical players. Bob Paisley knew he could change that at Liverpool and get the team to be more possession based. But at that time, Liverpool never had the personnel to do so. Still, he had an idea and that was to turn Phil Thompson, a midfielder, into a ball-playing central defender and immediately Liverpool started to build from the back which was something new to the English leagues. Under Bill Shankly, Liverpool Football Club was successful but if Liverpool wanted to get their hands on the big European trophy, things would need to evolve. When Bill Shankly stepped aside, to his surprise, Bob Paisley was then appointed as the next Liverpool manager and this was the beginning of Liverpool's most successful period. With Bob Paisley now in charge, this meant he could implement his tactical ideas and make Liverpool a possession-based team that could compete for the Champions Cup, which is exactly what happened. And it was the start of a beautiful relationship between Liverpool and the Champions Cup known today as the UEFA Champions League. Since the European Cup started, only Bob Paisley, Carlo Ancelotti and Zinedine Zidane have won the competition three times. What is extraordinary is that Bob Paisley never saw himself as a real manager, but as someone as a fix until a real manager came along. But this shows the type of genius he was, a humble genius, but what made him a tactical genius? Formation-wise, he set up with a 4-4-2, which also could transition into a 4-4-1-1. Kenny Dalglish's intelligence allowed this to work effectively and Bruce Grobbler was also a pivotal addition to the squad. He was okay with his distribution, aiding the possession football and giving LFC the ability to play from the back but if one of the centre backs were being closed down they could easily play it back to the keeper to kill the pressure though back then the keepers could pick up a back pass. They were a team who liked to press and put pressure on their opponents but even more so if they identified a star player. Bob Paisley was a great judge of players' ability and he could recognise and spot dangerous players and Liverpool would then try to mark that player out of the game and the team's pressing play was a man-orientated one. Though they were a possession-based football inside, they never had possession just for the sake of it and were quite offensive within their play. Bob Paisley had players such as Sunez and Callaghan who could pick out a superb pass and set Liverpool on a counter-attack if needed. The fullbacks were required to get further forward but on one flank could be seen as more attacking and direct depending on the personnel than the other. Phil Neal, Liverpool's most decorated player, was a player for Paisley who loved to get forward and overlap. In midfield, Liverpool often had a player able to break behind the defence and become a supporting act for the strikers, helping them penetrate. The strikers could drift out wide and this allowed that central midfielder to break forward. Matt Dermott in particular was very effective at this under Bob Paisley and was an intelligent player. 
Bob Paisley preferred to channel play centrally and would have plays operating in central areas but constantly looking for space to be an option to receive the ball. Plays could be seen drifting out, then in, or in, then out, and this made it hard for the opponent's team to mark a player. But the narrow play also helped them off the ball and made it easier for them to trap their opponents into wider areas. And their fullbacks were vital as they often left their defensive position to engage in a battle on their flank. In the UK, Liverpool were miles ahead from the rest and it would take a little while before other teams in the league started to catch up with what was then football ahead of its time. The fluid system was hard for the opponents to deal with and due to players roaming around and swapping positions, it was hard to man mark any of the Liverpool players. Besides the good football, Liverpool were also grafters. This could have been seen as a benefit when playing in Europe as teams who may be more technically gifted than Liverpool had to be just as determined which hardly any side were. Lastly, Bob Paisley never had the personality like some of the great managers, Jose Mourinho and Sir Alex Ferguson just to name a couple, but he had extraordinary knowledge of the game and often made the correct decisions. But that was my analyst of Bob Paisley, the humble genius. We are now going to go into Football Manager to look at my Bob Paisley inspired 4-4-2 for Liverpool basically. So here we are. Bob Paisley's 4-4-2 from 1974 to 1983. I have two versions, one with set pieces and one without. This test in particular was done without the set pieces set up. But the set pieces are created by Nat, so credit to Nat for the set pieces and if you use them and you are successful, again, all credit to Nat. But in goal, we do have our sweeper keeper on the support duty. He's going to stray just outside of the penalty box and look to play some counter-attack and passes. On the left side of the fence, we have our fullback on the support duty. He will run wide with the ball and he's also going to close down more, leaving his defensive position to try and engage into a tackle. Our right back is a fullback but on the attack duty. He has the same instructions apart from the hard coded ones, which is cross more often and get further forward. In central defence we have one ball playing defender and we also have a central defender. The central defender is going to be more composed and more comfortable in keeping possession whilst the ball playing defender can keep possession but he also has the duty to dribble more with the ball and play that more risky pass. He's going to be the ball playing defender that is going to be setting up our counter attacks if needed. On the left side of the midfield we have our wide playmaker. His hard coded instructions are to shoot less often, cut inside with the ball, take more risk, cross less often, sit narrower and roam from position but he's going to be the team's main creator of course because he is our wide playmaker. But also he's going to operate in similar areas as the advanced playmaker but of course he's going to be more inclined to position himself on wider areas. On the right hand side we have another support duty but this time he is a winger. This is someone that's going to be dribbling more, running wide with the ball, crossing more often and staying wider. In central midfield we have our Mazala, someone that's going to look to get further forward and break in behind our deep line forward, hopefully. But when you are playing a bigger side, so someone like Manchester United or Manchester City away, then you may want to change this Mazala into a box to box midfielder. Similar, but the Mazala is going to be more adventurous and the Mazala looks to close down further higher up the pitch. But by default, we do have our Mazala on the support duty and he is partnered with a deep line playmaker who is also on the support duty. If you notice here, we have many, many players on the support duty and that's trying to replicate players roaming around and swapping their positions. But the deep line playmaker does have hold position as his player instruction and therefore less likely to roam around and swap positions. Up top we have our deep lying forward, our Kenny Dalglish, someone that can make this formation actually turn into a 4-4-1-1 in certain transitions. But he's also going to link up play, trying to spread the ball wide and you will notice he does have some nice link up play with the wide playmaker but he is partnered with the advanced forward. Now Bob Paisley might have gone with the poacher, well Bob Paisley wouldn't have been playing football manager but he may have gone with the poacher but for me I like a striker more involved in the build up and of course the advanced forward is still someone that's going to work hard, someone that's going to chase down misplaced through balls or clearances from deep. He's going to win possession and lay off passes or crosses to his teammates. A poacher is not going to be involved in the play. But that is the player instructions and the player roles. We're now going to look at the team instructions. 
For the mentality, we are on positive. The attacking width is set to fairly wide. For the approach play, we are going to play out of the defence. Of course we are. For the passing directness, we have gone with the shorter passing and the tempo is set to standard 50% right in the middle. In the final third, we are going to whip our crosses, which can be dangerous when you have bodies in the box. We are going to work the ball into the box also, trying to not waste our chances. And when we are on the ball, we're going to be more direct and run at the defence. In transition, when the possession has been lost, we are going to counter press or we're going to put pressure on the opponent as soon as we lose the ball. When the possession has been won, we do not have any instructions. But when the goalkeeper is in possession, he will be taking short kicks, trying to aid our possession game. Out of possession, our defence line is set to higher, but our line of engagement is set to standard. Our defensive width is set to narrow, so we are going to force the opposition on the outside. Our marking and tackling, we are using tighter marking. We are pressing more urgent and preventing the short goalkeeper distribution. Now, that there is the team instructions and the player instructions. The second tactic is literally the exact same but it has some set pieces that may help you score even more goals but we did score a lot of goals and we are now going to look at the results. So for the English Premier League we played 38, we won 31, we drew 4 and lost 3. Getting 97 points of course we were the champions but just like Bob Paisley we were the champions of Europe also beating Lazio 2-1 in the final. In the English FA Cup, we didn't do too well. We got knocked out in the third round by Preston North End. In the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the semi-final by Fulham. And in the Charity Shield, we did win that, beating Arsenal 2-1 in the final. But in the Premier League, that is where we scored most of our goals. Of course, we scored 95 goals. 11 of those were against Arsenal because we did beat them 9-1. And for the goals against, we only conceded 22. I say only because that is the best defence in the league, which is surprising. For the detailed stats, you can see for the average possession, we had 57% of the balls. Only Manchester City had more. Considering this tactic is inspired by a tactic that was made years and years ago, and Manchester City are currently managed by Pep Guardiola, I would say we've done very well. But for the goals, you can see we scored 95 goals, we had the highest expected goals for and you can see goals from corners, we scored 6 which is still decent but we do have Trent Alexander-Arnold who is a beast from corners and we do have Virgil van Dijk and Joe Gomez who aren't bad in the air. So naturally we are going to score a few corners but if we had to set pieces on, that number could have been even more. Goals from direct free kicks, we scored three, but that is not important. For the passes completed, we completed the sixth most passes in the Premier League and we created the fifth most clear cut chances. Defensively, we conceded the least goals in the league. We had 21 clean sheets. Again, I find that very impressive. And when it comes to the interceptions, winning the ball back, we came in second, getting 595 interceptions. But you can see here for the goals we scored the most goals we had the highest points per game the shots for we came in third the shots against we came in second and for the pass completion ratio we came in third but let's look at the player overall because mo salah 41 goals in the premier league and he was the advanced forward so you might so you might have to expect your striker to score lots of goals but for the most assists is james milner with 13 roberto Firmino with 11 who was our deep line forward most shots mo salah no surprise most man of the matches mo salah with 10 so by far the best player in the league Past completion, Joel Matip is there, but that isn't really important. And for the clean sheets, you can see Allison with 19. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at our attacking efficiency. You can see we were aggressive and we were clinical. Of course we were. For the general performance, well, we outperformed on everything, I'm guessing. And we scored a high number of expected goals for. But for our defensive efficiency, you can see that we were quiet and we were impenetrable. But for scoring, how did we score most of our goals? In the league, if we check the league, the last 50 matches, 53 were placed shots, 12 were headers, 3 were powerful shots, 3 were free kicks and 1 was a penalty. I'm sure that's not correct. I'm sure we scored more than one penalty, but that's what the analyst says. So that's what we're going to go with. For the assists, 20 of our assists came from through balls, 18 from crosses, 5 from a short pass, 4 from a free kick and 5 from corners. 
but that is how the team in general performed but we're now going to look at the squad stats so if we just go to selection info we're going to see who scored the most goals Mo Salah scored 50 goals in all competitions by far the most goals in this squad Sadio Mane there with 18 he was our right winger and Roberto Firmino with 10 and he was our deep line forward but for me but Mane did also play a few games as a deep line forward Firmino only played 23 games and if he played more he could have got better statistics for the assist James Milner with 15 assists in all competitions Roberto Firmino with 13 assists in all competitions Thiago there with 9 so to Jordan Henderson Naby Keita with 8 and so to Sadio Mane Mo Salado had a fantastic season scoring 50 goals getting 7 assists in only 42 games which is incredible and he had an average rating of 7.57 and we can see just looking at some of the results how entertaining this tactic can be so from the first three games in the premier league we beat west brom 5-0 we then beat fulham 3-0 and then beat arsenal 9-1 after we beat arsenal 9-1 we then beat west ham 6-1 and it just felt like this was going to go throughout the whole season of course the scoring did come down we only beat brighton 1-0 still three points nonetheless we beat leeds 4-0 we beat dortmund 7-0 away from home here you can see we beat burnley 5-0 as well we beat Aston Villa 4-0 we had a few losses here not very good but then when we did win we beat Fulham 4-1 to get back onto winning ways and I mean we had some fantastic results throughout the whole season and in the Champions League final we beat Lazio 2-1 to wrap up our season our fantastic season and that wraps up the video so thank you guys for watching thank you guys for listening my name is rdf it's been a pleasure don't forget if you are new or you haven't yet hit the like button hit the subscribe button leave a comment and check out my community page i will see you soon stay safe peace out